Hi guys, so join me here today and we're at Lindome Lakes and you join me on the lovely Beaches Lake here. And today we're going to do one of my favourite things and it's commercial silverfish fishing. It's one of them, you get plenty of bites, love this time here for this sort of thing. And I'm going to run you through how I do it, so let's get on box and get through that now. So you join me now on box and I'm going to give you a quick run through what areas I target and what I feed and why basically. So when you sat down on this peg, a bit different this one, normally they're open water. But if you have got an island, obviously it's a main holding spot. So it's one of them. I'd definitely have a line up there. But forget that. Forget it wasn't there. And where would I start? So I'd have a line at around about 7, 8 metres. So a top kit and three sections. And then another one at around 13 metres. And these are my two main holding spots. So I'll probably start long and then come short. So it's one of them where I'm going to feed a bit of ground bait. So in the ground bait. Oh, I'll tell you what ground bait I use first. I use dark F1 and Thatchers. So in winter, obviously it gets colder. As it gets colder, I cut out the amount of Thatchers. So as a starting point, I'll use, say, two pints of dark F1 to one pint Thatchers. Thatchers. Original I use, or dark, it doesn't really matter too much. And as it gets colder, I'll cut that out. So I'll use two and a half pints dark F1 and half a pint of Thatchers. And then, say if there's frost on ground, we've had hard frosts all week, and I know it's going to be really difficult, I'll just cut it out altogether and you use Dark F1. Lovely mix, and it's one that I've used every year since it came out, basically. So, got a load of fish over it, got a load of confidence, everything loves it, skimmers, you'll catch F1s and carp over it as well. But it's my main go-to for silverfish fishing. In that, I like to have a sprinkling of pellets, so when I say that, literally, if you have a handful of ground bait in that, there's probably like 10, 15 pellets, micro pellets that is soaked. So it just, I don't know, a bit of confidence. I like to think that the sit on bottom and the bigger fish tend to pick them off and stay there and chew them a little bit and it just holds them a bit longer. And then in that, I'll have some dead maggots as well. Same, not loads, just enough to keep them hold and then I'll lose feed live maggots over the top. So I'm just going to run you through. I'm going to kickstart my swim, but for the purpose of this video, just pretend that some of these live maggots are dead. <laughs> I left mine in the freezer, aren't we, so I've got no dead maggots with me, unfortunately. So normally I would feed dead maggots in with my ground bit, just so it makes it more inert, inactive, sit on bottom, don't wriggle away. But we haven't got any. So what I would do is get my live maggots that are dead, put them in, mix them round just so there's a few in. Take a squeeze, so you've got the odd odd maggot in there. I don't know if you can see them wriggling. Put that in, and then I'd put a bit of loose in as well. Quite a lot. Ground bait that I'm using is Dark F1 and Thatchers. So this is two parts Dark F1 to one part Thatchers. And in that, I've got some fishery micros just mixed in, because there's quite a lot of F1s and carp and stuff in here as well, skimmers, so you can't go wrong with that and then literally i just ship out put that on this spot and that's it started so single maggot favorite go to bait this time of year I do actually like a couple of pinkies sometimes as a change bait as well but single red can't go wrong with on that side and then first thing I do, lay my rig in and then pick up the catapult. That's it, I can't stress enough how important it is. Just flicking maggots over. There we go. So like I say, that's took that just as it were falling through water. So as rig's falling down, just grab that just as it we're about to touch bottom. Lovely little light. Same again, single maggot. up that side and then pick the catapult up again. Not many maggots, I don't know how many is there, probably a dozen. 
bit of it float and hold it. I'll leave it literally 15, 20 seconds or so. If I enter the bite, I'll just, oop, that was a little indication then. Come off. Just relay my rigging and just repeat the process. Bit of twig. <laughs> Caught a lot of leaves this year, a lot more than normal. Must have been heavy winds. A few twigs along the way. Just change me. Maggot. You get proper bites off them as well, a bit weird. Float goes under, you strike and you feel resistance and it comes to the top and it's a leaf. There we go, back in. See the maggots over the top. Nice light rig that I'm using. 4x10s this one. I'll give you a run through that in a bit. Just gonna catch a few fish for now. Nice little dinks on float. love this sort of fishing very active plenty of bites to be had even on coldest days and they're not not bad fish it's like even I know I fish a lot of commercial matches silverfish matches so I do target them specifically but I think even like when you're fishing for carp obviously this time of year they don't feed all the time, don't the carp, you, you might get a few late on or a few early, but fruit middle part at match, they're definitely worth targeting these because they're like four or five ounce a piece. And they soon build weight, so you don't need many to put pounds together. They're probably like two or three, I mean three or four to pound them, which when they come in regular, can be better than waiting for a carp depending on obviously where you're fishing and size the carp that you're catching. Another one. I oh, like peas in the pod at a minute. Lovely looking fish. Like I say, they do like that loose feed though, you've got to keep it going through water. Single maggot, sometimes changing colour at maggot can make a difference if bites go a bit iffy. Like I say, I sometimes put double pinky on, I haven't actually brought any with me today, but just slip a white maggot on or a pink maggot. And that's fine. So what I'll do now is I'll catch one more and then we'll end it there and I'll give you a run through the rig or something after. Oh, missed that one. There we go. Lovely. Just take your time with them. Hydra are a bit weird, they come to the top and do like a wiggle. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a wiggle to me. They just like shake their head, so you've got to use soft elastics, otherwise you can pull out of them. But there we go. Nice little pea in a pod, <laughs> little eyed. We'll end it there and I'll see you in a bit. So quick look at the rig that I'm using today to catch these silvers. 
and starting at the top end we've got a seven hollow elastic so for those of you that have used it will know it's really soft on the strike but you can power up if you need it to so we're fishing up that side there it's a bit obviously a bit snaggy and if i hook a carp or an f1 i want to be able to pull it away have enough power and keep the fish under control but i also need it soft enough to be able to hook the smaller fish bring them round and not bump them off so that's perfect elastic for this main line i've got o13 power line coming down to the float and i've got a 4b10s f1 maggot lovely float that if i had to pick one float for doing all my fishing that i do this would be it it's so versatile got a nice tip not too big but it's hollow so it's really visible as well so if you suffer with eyesight or anything like that definitely worth a look at these coming down so i've got some number 10 shots and as you can see where that they're spaced out is very important so this is what we call a tapered so we've got what's that four inch part five inch part and again and it just gets less and less so three inch two inch and then there we've got about an inch or so and it just bulks up and here i don't know if you can see but we'll zoom in we've got a number 13 stop so that's one of them just to get it dotted right down this time of year some of your biggest fish can literally just move your float a tiny little bit so it's dead important that little trimming shot get it right down and sensitive and then to the business end we've got an 08 hook length so that's 08 power line to a size 18 sfl sharpest hook i've ever used brilliant for this time of year with maggots or pellets anything you want to use so sharp just slides through and you hook all your fish so really good hook and like i say 08 power line power line's awesome i've used it all the time don't see the point in using anything else when what I'm using isn't broken so that's my rig so I can't stress enough how important it is to pick up a catapult in winter a lot of people think oh it's cold so you just put your bait out and sit there you probably catch odd one but nowhere near as enough as much as if you pick one of these up so today in this lake we'll be targeting eyed skimmers like roach perch these f1s and carp in here as well but all them species, maybe not bream and skimmers as much like it falling through the water. They lay like a bit more settled. But when you're fishing for hide and roach, it's definitely a must. The amount of times that you've put your rig in, lay it in and they take it on drop because literally they're competing this time of year for your maggots and you will actually catch them shallow as well. So they'll compete that much, come up off at bottom and it's just a lovely active way of fishing. So as I said earlier, when you are loose feeding maggots, especially with these eyes, they do have a tendency to come shallow, even on the coldest days. So it's that time, I've missed a couple of bites, and odd one funny indication, so the shallow rig has come out. Ooh, I like it when it's like this. It means the fish are feeding confidently, got the guards down, and we're about to go slay them. Still continue to lose feed, so exactly the same as what I was. Now we're trying to keep them up in water. So, I get to over the top. Just got to be a little bit more active with this. So, lifting your rig out, laying it in, and just constantly loose feeding. Probably cut down the amount I feed, but update, um, sorry, change how regular I feed it. So, I'll feed more regular. go but it's dead important when you're doing this sort of fishing to have a, a light elastic just because you don't want them splashing where you're catching them so you want to be able to hook them come out of the swim and then pull them back there we go another one on the single red maggot Single maggot. I'll give you a quick run through this rig once I've done. I'll catch a couple more first and then I'll, I'll show you what this rig is. Exactly the same. In. A few maggots over the top. There we go. Oh. can do really big weights of fish when they're like this because they're competing that much 
that you're putting them little bit bit of maggot in all the time and they just hang themselves basically. There we go, another little hide. Surprise, surprise. Look at that, maggot's not even been touched. So if maggot's all right, no need to change it. Obviously, if it's popped or all like that, just change it. But not even a mark on that one. It is worth mentioning that sometimes I have multiple shallow rigs. So the fish, obviously, you don't catch them all at the same depth. So I normally have a couple out on my side tray. Just so that like if they come even shallower, you'll have a shallower one. If you stop getting bites, it means that they've dropped deeper. Saw that elastic. Just stuck a little. Oh, it's gone in now. Lovely elastic is this. I'll get this one in, catch one more, and then I'll run fruit rig with you. But you can see how fast you can catch these and like I say, if you're missing bites, you just literally come a bit shallower, keep laying it in, get a nice light rig. Fall through water really slow. And half at time they just tuck themselves. I get in there. I had a bite after like 10, 15 seconds or so, literally lift it, lay it in and go again. Lift it out, lay it in. It's always when you say you'll catch one more in it that they go a bit iffy. Oh. Missed a bite then. Oh. Pull me elastic out, that one did. There we go. Another little lovely height. Look at that. Yay! So what I'll do now, come a bit closer and I'll run you through the rig. So I'm going to give you a quick run through the shallow rig that I'm using. First of all, you probably notice it's on a grey top kit. So this is one of the great short F1 kits. Does it make a difference? Who knows? Who cares? Personally, I quite like it. I think it probably does for silvers, otherwise I wouldn't use them. But if you give me a black one, I'd use a black one as well. But if I had a preference, I'd use silver, especially for shallow, because you're, you're feeding and you're letting them look up in the water after the feed. Whereas on the bottom, they've got the red downs feeding. So I don't think it makes as much difference, but shallow fishing, it's in my mind, I think it does, but it's one of them. I use it anyway. So in this, I've got a size three elastic, just a solid free through 
a side puller as well. So it's literally that much of elastic in, probably five foot. And to that, we'll talk about the rig. I've got 013 power line. Same as all my silverfish rigs, 013 power. Come down, got a 4x10 chanty. So I know we're fishing a 4x10 on the bottom in an F1 maggot, but the chanties are just a bit more finesse. So it's got like, falls a bit slower and this one got a couple of tiny little shots on it just so it falls dead slow through the water and down here i've actually got a three inch hook length on so because i'm fishing shallow i like to fish a three inch hook length and that is 08 to a size 18 so 08 power to a size 18 sfl like i say three inch when i'm shallow because sometimes you can literally fish a float depth and catch them six inches deep Obviously, that's earlier on in year when they're a bit more ravenous. Now we're catching probably 18 inches deep. So that's it. Simple as that. Nice shallow rig. Now I'm going to catch some more fish. There you go guys i've had a lovely days fishing here as you can probably tell little technical difficulty with the mic but it's not going to ruin the video little voice over here got loads of fish couple of hours fishing complimentary f1s because it's lindome hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one cheers guys